Hello and welcome to this look at a challenging redox equation question with a work through broken down into stages. So this is a bit challenging because not only is there a missing product, there's also the fact it's literally just given you word descriptions of what's happening. So what they want you to do first of all is use oxidation numbers to show the element that is oxidized and the element that's reduced using the oxidation number signs as well. So the part of the description that's of use to us is where it starts saying what chemicals react with what. So using that limited information, you can put together the beginnings of an equation which will allow you to establish oxidation number changes and use these to predict balancing numbers. So obviously this isn't a complete equation. We haven't balanced it yet and we also have a missing product. But we've put down what the question has told us. HNO3 is reacting with sulfur and it makes sulfuric acid and nitrogen dioxide plus something else. So the first thing to do is to assign oxidation numbers to identify what elements are involved in the redox aspect of this equation. So now what you do is eliminate all the numbers that don't change. So hydrogen, for example, doesn't change and neither does oxygen. So we ignore those two and we just focus on the nitrogen and the sulfur. So what we need to do next is work out oxidation number changes and associated electron transfers with those. So pause the clip and have a go at this yourself before you resume. I'll come back in a few seconds. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you've had a go at that. And maybe you've done, done this kind of working. So for example, the nitrogen is clearly reduced because it's gone from plus five to plus four. That means one electron has been gained. The sulfur has obviously gone up from zero to plus six, so that's been oxidized. Six electrons are lost. And the problem we have is that the electron transfers don't balance. One electron being gained can't be supporting six electrons being lost and vice versa. So you need to multiply one of them up so that both sides have six electrons being transferred, not just one. So if we take the reduction process and do this six times, this would release six electrons, or rather it would gain six electrons from the oxidation part of the equation. So let's take everything that has nitrogen in it and multiply that by six. So I've moved my NO2 along a little bit, so I can put a six in front of it. So if we now clear some space and think about balancing the equation using species as well. So we can use the oxygens and hydrogens to apply balancing numbers elsewhere in the equation and predict what our mystery product might be. So as you've probably guessed, hydrogen and oxygen commonly go together as water. So let's count up the number of atoms of each of those two elements that we have. So we have four hydrogens and two oxygens to account for. Now clearly that can go into an H2O. In fact, it produces two H2Os. So doing a quick check of our atoms both sides, we've now got an equation that works. So having a quick check at the mark scheme, you can see where you get the the answers from and the marks from. Okay, hopefully this has been a useful look at what's potentially quite a tricky question. Until next time, thanks for listening and see you soon.